Welcome back, and in this video we're going to be looking at exceptions in Java. And specifically in those instances where, say, you've run your program and you get all these exceptions or errors coming up, and we want to look at what's, what's actually causing them and how to handle them. So an exception is basically some unwanted or unexpected event that happens during the runtime of your program, which can lead to uh, it, well, disrupting the actual flow of your program. And so let's get a, a visual view of how that actually all looks. So essentially we have, well we know everything in Java is an object, right? So we have our object class, okay? And from that object class we then derive our throwable class. And then from that throwable class, we essentially then split down into our exceptions and our errors. So sort of uh, putting myself into a corner here with the space, but we have our errors. And exceptions, okay? And so what it basically means is that exceptions and errors extend throwable and throwable extends the object class, okay? And then from these, we go even further down and we get our exceptions splitting up into our checked and our unchecked exceptions, okay? And so if it's checked, what it means is that the compiler basically checks for it at runtime. Uh, and then we have our errors, which we're not gonna go into as much detail in here, but um, if you wanna have an example of them, then you can look at the assertions, uh, assert statement videos, where assertion errors are just one type of these. So let's actually look at how this all looks in code. So we're gonna start off by looking at an unchecked exception. So one that doesn't get checked by the compiler when you hit run. And the one we're gonna look at is probably one that you may be familiar with, uh, I know I am, and that's the array index out of bounds exception. So as you can see here from lines nine to 12, I've actually already defined a method where I've got an array of uh, integers called my numbers, uh, and I've got one, two, three in it. And then I try to print out um, the fifth element of my array, which obviously should give me an error because, well, it's only got three elements. So let me do that and we can see what happens. So I'm just gonna throw the method call in and hit run. And no surprise there, we get an array index out of bounds exception with this five uh, representing this five here. So if I changed it to a seven, then that would be a seven. Now let's look at how we could potentially deal with that. And so what we're gonna use is what's known as a try catch block. And essentially it's pretty much what it says on the tin uh, in that we have a try statement here and in that statement, we'll have a piece of code we're going to try. And as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same as this code that we had here. And then what it's going to do is, if it detects a certain exception, then we're going to catch it. Okay, and so this is all taking place in my method that catches, oh well, to be fair, this should probably be uh, more aptly named as method that catches array index out of bounds exception. Okay, and so if I then change this to run uh, that my insanely long method name, uh, method that catches array index out of bound exception, then we can see that we get exception call. However, if we look here, we are actually catching any type of exception. And we may be looking for a particular type of one. And so what we should always do, and it's always good practice, is just to try and be as specific as possible. And so I'm gonna change this to an array index out of bounds exception, okay? And so this will still be catching the same type as this is throwing. Um, and so if I run this, we'll still get the exception core printing here. Now on top of this, we may have our try, and then we may be trying to catch a different exception. So say I change this to a null pointer exception, and, we're, and then if we run this, we're obviously going to get an error, aren't we? Uh, and we can see we got an array index out of bounds exception. 
Another perk to having this is that we then know if any other types of exceptions are thrown, then we will have our compiler telling us. And so we may also want to have some code that gets well executed regardless of what happens in the try and catch block. And this may be us, say, opening resources, uh, such as opening a stream. Uh, if you remember the last video, we were looking at scanners, how we opened a stream there. And what we might want to do is just have a piece of code which will execute every single time, regardless of what happens. So if it gets to the try uh, block and fails, it will still happen, well, we'll still have our finally code executed. And this is a really useful tool for programmers um, as it allows them to make sure that any of their resources are not left opened, um, which again helps for efficiency and a whole lot of other reasons. So uh, I'm going to put a system.out.println statement in and say we are in the finally block. So now if we run this, we get exception caught as it catches the exception in the catch block and then it prints out we are in the finally block. And so if I, well if I essentially broke this and say I got it to look for a different exception so that it doesn't catch it, then well let's see what happens. So I'm going to get it to look for a null pointer exception. And here we, well, we know that this isn't going to give us a null pointer exception. It's going to give us an array index out of bounds exception. So if I hit run here, then as you can see, we get the array index out of bounds exception, but we also get to execute all the code we have in the uh, finally block. So that's how we deal with unchecked exceptions. And now we're going to come on to checked exceptions, which, as I mentioned before, are exceptions which are checked by the compiler at runtime. And so an example of this was the when we were using the scanner class in the last video. So for example, if I define a new scanner class, so scanner s equals new, well sorry, defining a new scanner object, uh, new scanner, and as the input, I'm going to have a file input. So new file um, and it will be a fake file. So essentially it's a file that doesn't exist uh, and so this should give us an error. Um, so first of all we can see we have an unhandled exception. So IntelliJ is already telling us that uh, for this checked exception we haven't handled it. And that's because for these ones we actually have to uh, have a try catch block or something to deal with them um, before we hit run whilst with the unchecked exceptions we can sort of get away with it and break our programs. So there's two ways which we can deal with this. Um, the first is to simply just use a try catch block like we've been using before and that would look something like this. So we would define our try and put this within the try brace and then we'll be wanting to catch a file not found exception. Uh, so we defend uh, so we create our object there, and then we can catch it with system.out.println anything. Or we could try the second method, which is, so if we get rid of this, and that's essentially sort of kicking the can down the line, so to speak, and actually adding it in the method signature, uh, throws file not found exception. And so that's telling the program that we know this method could potentially throw a file not found exception, but the method that we're calling it from is what's going to deal with it. In which case we could go to here and so say we switch this up for a checked exception. Now as you can see we're getting an error, unhandled exception. And so this would want us to uh, potentially either add it, um, either add throws file not found exception to the method signature here. Um, or use the try catch statement. Now because this is the main method it makes sense to use the try catch statement because we can't essentially or kick the can down the line anymore. We can't we can't sort of uh, say the method calling main is going to take care of it because main is the main method. So I'm just going to create a try catch block and um, define file not found exception here uh, and then 
I will simply just do uh, or just say file has not been found. And so if I was to run that, we would then get file has not been found. So now we know how to handle exceptions, but what we don't know how to do is throw our own exception. And so I'll show this in a new method. Uh, I'm going to call it public, uh, well, I'm going to call it our own exception. And so we can get a certain exception to be thrown uh, based on our own um, circumstances. Uh, so the way we do that is because it's still an exception, we still have to use one of the, one of the methods that we mentioned previously. So in this case, I'm going to use a try catch block. And then I can say if uh, true, so this will always happen, uh, throw new exception. And I'm just going to do it as a general exception. I could do a specific type such as a null pointer or file not found. And I'm going to say this is our exception. And then I need to catch that. So uh, I'll put my catch block here, catch exception e, whoops, and hence we have our exception call. And then I can simply just follow out the way system out of print line our own exception. And so now if I choose to run this, so I'm going to get rid of that and just replace it, then we can see that we get our own exception printed from here. So that's an introduction to exceptions and how to handle and throw our own ones. And I hope you found the content useful. And if you have, of course, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.